I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! Uh, here's a bit of a controversial topic the, the last couple days, but Anthony, the Islanders have mailed it in. Um, you know, I, I, I would have, I, I really was planning on saying round, but, uh, they, I mean, they did play some inspired hockey, uh, the other day against Boston, but, um, either, either way they, uh, you know, it just seems like, you know, even though the players in, in press conferences will say, you know, they still believe in the room that they could do it you got to believe deep down that they know that, that they're going to miss it. And I think, I think that weighs on you mentally. Um, you know, and I think also the, the pending, you know, trade deadline with where they are, I think some guys, you know, might realize that Lou might shake things up. And I, I really do believe they love each other in that room. And, uh, you know, they got so close and I want to, you know, stay together. And I think all that weighs on them um, and it's affecting their play. But um, yeah, listen, it's tough when you have such high expectations as they did. Uh, the success they had the last two years, and then you have this type of season. I, I just think it, it's, you know, there's really no other way to say it. It sucks. And I, I think they feel it. They feel the weight of that every single day. Um, and it's tough getting up in the morning knowing, you know, and playing a game when, you know, it might all be for naught. So, yeah, I, I would like to think um, Lee and a lot of the veteran guys in the locker room, you know, wouldn't, you know, wouldn't allow that to happen. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure there are guys that are really still busting their ass night in and night out. But, um, you know, I think I think their play has been uninspiring lately, and I, again, I think it's because where they are. And I, I again, uh, to repeat myself, I think it's just weight on them. It's taken its toll, and it showed. Oh, so it's around. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. All right, Phil. I'm gonna go beer here. Uh, I I don't think they've necessarily mailed it in, but um, I I don't think that they've they've got the the personnel really to kind of compete to the same level that they were last year. Like Kyle Palmieri obviously ended up being the bad choice over Jordan Everly. I, I said from the start that Jordan Everly, that loss was going to hurt them. He had clear chemistry with Matt Barzell, your team's best player. And you, you, you just lost a legitimate, I would say at least a top six forward. You could argue that he's probably, that he's a legitimate first liner. Like he's, He's right on that cusp. So um, you lose a guy like him. Kyle Palmieri is not productive. He's not a facilitator. He's a guy that really kind of just cashes in on opportunities. And there's no one really to create for him because Brock Nelson, as good of a player as he is, is not really a facilitator. He's he's a guy that's more of a finisher. So there, there's no real connection for him. Anders Lee is another guy that doesn't create his own offense. They don't have enough guys that create offense in that top six. And Oliver Wallstrom hasn't been put there because Barry Trotz, for whatever reason, seems to have a vendetta. I don't know if he, if he, Oliver Wallstrom, John Wicked Barry Trotz and like killed his dog or something. But um, I, I just don't get what the issue is there with Wallstrom. He's he's played great, and I think he deserves more of a chance. I, I also tend to think that that defense just isn't good enough without having that that third. Um, you know, top four option and Noah Dobson and Scott Mayfield play the same side. So you can't really put them together. So the defense isn't nearly as good. And now Ilya Sorokin, listen, Ilya Sorokin's a very good goaltender. He's going to have a very good career, but it, it, it's obvious that last year's defense and everything like that really helped him out at this point. So, you know, and, and that goes for almost any goaltender. If you have the type of defense last year that the Islanders had in front of Ilya Sorokin. And then you go to this year's defense, the results are going to change. So if once they build back that team back up, we'll know where the Islanders really stand. But at the same time, I, I, I do think that the efforts could have been better from some of the guys. So give, give me more from Josh Bailey, who I think has been, he's been a freeloader this year. You ask me, that's the best way I can describe Josh Bailey's play. He's been an absolute freeloader. He hasn't, he hasn't pulled his own weight. And Kyle Palmieri has done nothing to earn any of that contract that he's got. So I'm going to say beer. I'm going to go beer too, because you know, you play for Barry Trotz. You're not going to just mail it in or phone it in or however you want to say it. Uh, The other thing I'm going to say with that is uh, yes. I think the weight of them and all the trials and tribulations that they've had this year 
is has gotten to them. But you know something? They're going to start relaxing now. It, it might even be freeing for some guys. The other part of it that you, that you alluded to, Anthony, is you got guys in the locker room that know they're probably playing their last game as New York Islander with their teammate or if their teammates getting shipped out more than likely either uh, one guy we're about to mention in a moment, or it could be uh, Josh Bailey. Uh, there's another one, but um, you, you know, they're still going to try, but it could also be somewhat liberating. Now you're going to get the young guys that have a chance to get in there and prove themselves, prove that, that they could, they could stay in the NHL and hopefully that that's what they could do and move on from there. Uh, we are going to bring up one thing that happened because, uh, Anthony, this has just been a little bit ridiculous, and I got to get your opinion on this. Our friends over at All Things Islanders uh, put up a post to uh, defend Barry Trotz and Lou Lamarillo because there are fans that just keep on saying, oh, we got we to gotta get rid of those guys. Like, what's your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts are you have you have idiots in every fan base. So when things are going bad, the idiots come out and they say things like Trots and Lou should go. Um, but yet when, you know, they were one game away from going to the Stanley Cup finals, you know, everything was great. You know, so um, I don't really pay any attention to it. Um, I, I think that uh, Trots and Lou um, are really the reason why the Islanders have had the success they've had the last three years. Um, I mean, there was there was a um, I don't know which athletic I don't know which athletic reporter did it, but there was like a, a couple of weeks ago there was a poll and he he asked like executives and agents various questions from you know best arenas to play in, and one of the questions was to an agent, where do you steer your where do you steer your your clients to in terms of free agency when it comes to trying to pick a place you want to you want to play? The Maple Leafs and Canadians are one and two. Uh, and then the Rangers and Islanders were both next with three votes each. Um, and that speaks volume to the culture that Lou Lamorello has brought to the island. You know, 10 years ago, you know, the Islanders would have been at the bottom of that list. Now they're respected because of Lou Lamorello and Barry Trotz. And then, yes, they have world class facilities now, like the Northwell Ice Center where they practice and Belmont. So, um, no, these people are morons. Trots and Lamorello um, are are probably for my money, you know, top top three best combo in, in all of hockey when it comes to GM coach. Um, and listen, they just had a, they just had a bad year. You know, it's, that's all you can say. It's not Trots's fault. Yeah, you criticize him for how to use Wallstrom, and that's fair. But other than that, I mean, he's a fantastic coach. His record shows. Um, I mean, and, and Big Lou. What else? What else could you say about Big Lou? I mean, he's he's just Big Lou. Phil, uh, Phil, your thought, and then I'm going to hit on something that Anthony just said right there. I it just, I I get it. Like there are times where things just go wrong, and it looks like the players tune out the coach. I don't think the players are tuning out the coach. I don't think any of this is Barry Trotz's fault. It's Lou Lamorello's fault more than anything. Because he made the wrong decisions with the wrong players. You you, you wanted Kyle Palmieri there. I, I said that Jordan Neverly was the guy that you did not want to get rid of. And I, I wouldn't have taken Kyle Palmieri over Jordan Everly. I know you needed goal scorers, but you also need guys to facilitate offense. And you you shouldn't have shouldn't have done that. Um the other thing I would say is that you did nothing to replace Nick Letty. And I, I get it, they were in a bind. But Noah Dobson doesn't play the left side. You're, you're not going to put him on the left side. You're going to keep him on the right because if you ask me, he's the best defenseman on this team going forward. Noah Dobson will be the best defenseman on this team. So I, I, I think Lou Lamorello, you know, bringing in like the fourth liners and giving them big deals and then J.G. Pajo, yes, J.G. Pajo has been good for them. But that was a big contract to give to a bottom six player when you already had bottom six depth. And you 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 didn't expose Cal Clutterbuck in the expansion draft. And you you brought, you went with Jordan Eberle there. I, I don't get I, – see, these decisions I just don't get. So I, I get why Lamorello should be getting some heat because I think that some fans – are making him immune to criticism and above above reproach. And I, I don't like that because I think that he's been off his rocker a little bit for a while. 
So, but um, I no, they shouldn't be fired. But yeah, there should be some critic or uh, criticism towards Lou Lamarell. Uh, the number one thing, and by the way, criticism is one thing. Everybody has a bad season. Everybody has a bad shift. Everybody has a bad game. You get, you give them some criticism. Trots, we talked about it with playing the young players. Lou with some of his personnel decisions. But Anthony hit on one thing. It's the culture. The Islanders are now a destination for free agents. They're closer to the New York Mets versus the Yankees as far as that goes. As far, I mean, a few years ago, I don't even know if free agents would have gone there. Andrew Ladd went there, and they overpaid to get him. And that's what Lou has done with Trotz and Ledecky. Let's give Ledecky some credit on this, too. Because this team, what they used to have to do is they used to have to trade to get guys. Now they can actually go out and sign free agents with that cap space that Lou Lamarillo managed to get. So it's... It, it's not the end of the world. It's one bad season, but they're going to retool next year and see how it goes. All right. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.